Okay, here's how you should be writing about relative power in your text. So the easiest example to remember this is that in Korean, uh, they have a whole range of hierarchies based on whether you are older or younger, male or female. So perhaps the best known example is something like opa, which sort of means older. Uh, and so for them, relative power is pretty straightforward and very clear. Somewhere like Japan might be a similar similar linguistic sort of nature, where you have kind of your, your very clear distinct authorities uh, and your very clear subordinates. So, you know, who's the boss, who is not the boss is sort of the question of and so it's important to remember that relative power is perceived in the sense that it's social, so you can never really say for sure. Uh, and a lot of it is kind of fake it till, the, till you make it, like knowing the difference between, you know, a poor person in a discourse who speaks really confidently as though they have all the power and someone who doesn't have any power uh, is pretty impossible to say. But so we can, when looking at a transcript or a discourse, we can say pretty comfortably who perceives they have the relative power. Uh, but that, of course, doesn't necessarily relate to political, social or economic power outside of the discourse. So when you think about relative power, these questions might help you out. So who's the topic manager or who drives the conversation, who asks the most questions, who interrupts the most, who holds the floor the most, who is the most deferential to the other interlocutor and who is the most cooperative and who is the least, who begins and, en and ends the discourse. So there are, of course, other questions that you could be asking but these will help you to sort of work out who has the most relative power in a discourse. All right. So rather than me read this out, of course, this is from some literature, 2005, Wolf again. Uh, they talk about power imbalances and perceived relative power. It might be useful for you to pause here and sort of read through and get a vibe for how uh, the literature uses the idea of relative power. Okay, of course, relative, relative power in Australia is a lot more tricky. So you're thinking of, you know, Australia being non-hierarchical, uh, an egalitarian, meaning everyone sort of believes they're at the same sort of level. Uh, and so, of course, this makes talking about relative power a lot more tricky, which is why it's important that you understand that you're talking about perceived social power and you're thinking specifically about that discourse. So, you know, a person might have high perceived relative power within one discourse and much less in another context as well, which is where, of course, situational and cultural context come in as well. So keep all those things in mind. But there's just an easy thing that you can talk about. Uh, to explore power imbalances uh, within a discourse.